Welcome to ARE Live. I'm Mark Tier, the founder of Black Spectacles. Uh, today I'm sitting across from Mike Newman, who's going to field your awesome questions, uh, the, uh, of which you guys sent a ton at, uh, at lightning speed, because uh, we only have an hour here. So um, uh, this is going to be a really great Q&A session with Mike. Um, and what's cool is that there's a lot of different questions um, covering a wide range of exams and NCARB topics. So this is going to be a really good session. Uh, but before we get started, uh, if you'd like to attend our next ARE Live broadcast where we'll review our uh, PPP mock exam, Programming, Planning, and Practice mock exam on May 25th, uh, visit blackspectacles.com um, slash podcast to register. And during the broadcast, uh, just like today, you'll have a chance to ask questions to the group and Mike. Um, Excuse me. Now, if you don't know Mike, he's an adjunct professor at the School of the Art Institute of Chicago. He's also the founder of Shed Studio and his instructors for Black Spectacles online AIA ARE prep curriculum. Um, if you haven't already checked out our AIA ARE prep curriculum, head over to blackspectacles.com to check out any of the free uh, tutorials for the courses. Um, and at the end today, we have a special Black Spectacles promo code to share. So make sure you stay tuned for that at the end. Um, and then also, um, uh, tonight we'll be taking questions um, and any of your, uh, your comments uh, using uh, both the GoToWebinar question box uh, as well as on Twitter using the ARE Live podcast hashtag. So hashtag ARE Live podcast if you're on Twitter. Um, but first, uh, let's go ahead and hand it over to Mr. Newman. Okay. Uh, hey, everybody. Um, so as Mark said, we got lots and lots of very good uh, uh, questions, uh, most of which I think will present us with a uh, lots to talk about. Um, there are bound to be a few of these questions that uh, the answers that we give are going to be very unsatisfactory because uh, there's just sort of the nature of some of these things are just complicated. Um, but we'll talk about it to the best uh, extent that we can. Uh, and sort of run through it. As Mark said, some of these are more about kind of NCARB and about the process, and a few of them are uh, much more specific, uh, actual sort of detail questions. Uh, and so we'll just kind of run through and get through as, uh, as many as we sort of think we can, uh, can raise through. Um, so I'm just going to dive right in. Uh, Jennifer asked, uh, in some of the videos that we've uh, put out on the Black Spectacle site, um, that there was sort of a question about uh, uh, kind of how cooling works. Uh, and her uh, specific question was uh, you, that we went over the concept of uh, cooling, about how you uh, take the refrigerant and you compress it, and then you let it expand in another portion of the, the same loop. Uh, and that by uh, compressing and letting it expand and compressing and letting it expand, that sort of uh, cycle that gets created, which is shown here in this little diagram, this very drawn over uh, diagram, um, that allows you to alter the temperature because there's a direct relationship between the pressure of the refrigerant and the temperature of that same refrigerant. And this is the tool, this is the basic tool for how you do air conditioning. You know, when you're doing heating, you just burn something and it gets hot and then you take that heat and you move it around. But when you're cooling, it's really tricky because you can't just make something cool. You actually have to remove the heat, which sounds simple, but when you start sort of playing it out, it becomes a little complicated. Uh, and so the way that got figured out way back uh, in the early days of uh, the 20th century, there were some even earlier examples where people kind of came up with similar ideas, but really became sort of commercially viable in the early days of the 20th century, was this idea of this relationship between pressure and uh, temperature for refrigerants. And so by compressing, hence you hear the term a compressor for an HVAC system, by compressing the refrigerant, you make it very hot. It is therefore hotter than the outside temperature. And so it will then give off heat to the outside. And then after it's done that for a while, you bring it in and you let it go through an expansion valve and it expands and it gets uh, much less pressure and it therefore becomes much cooler and it is now cooler than the inside temperature. So it takes on heat from the inside. And you just keep going in this cycle, taking on heat from the inside, taking it to the outside and giving it off. If same thing, if it's a window air conditioner versus a chiller system with a whole big cooling tower and the whole thing, it's all essentially the same. That basic system is always going to be at the root 
of 95% of the air conditioning uh, systems that are uh, out there. There's a few other uh, evaporative cooling systems and some other stuff that, that show up here and there, but m the vast majority is going to use this refrigerant loop. Um, so the basic question was, okay, we talked about it being um, 120 degrees on the one side, uh, and then uh, how much, what is the temperature of, of the uh, refrigerant when it's after it's gone through uh, the expansion valve on the other side? And uh, I, the example that I was using, it was actually talking about it being in the sort of 70 uh, degree range, um, though I wouldn't focus on the exact numbers. Um, in certain situations, the uh, refrigerant um, is, re is sort of required to be hotter in the compressor side and cooler on the um, evaporative side uh, than other situations. And so there's a whole range of different possibilities. It will always be within a certain range. So you won't see on the hot side it being kind of different from say 110 to 130, 100 and I don't think it gets any higher than 130. Um, and on the uh, coolant side, it won't be any lower than about 50 uh, and would go up to maybe 70, 75, something along those lines. So there's a range of use, different refrigerants. R22 is a little different from the current one, which I always forget is R410A, I think, is the current uh, uh, most used refrigerant. Um, and so some are built off of different refrigerants, and so they have to use what made sense for those refrigerants. So I wouldn't focus on the exact degrees, just that basic idea that it has to be hotter than the outside for it to be able to give off heat to the outside. And then when it's on the inside, it has to be cooler uh, than the inside so that it can take on heat from, from the inside. And that's how you're sort of able to pull that heat from the inside and give it to the outside, whether it's a window air conditioner or some big complicated multi-part system with a cooling tower on the roof. The basic gist of it is always the same. So definitely spend some time making sure you feel comfortable with that idea. Uh, and while I appreciate the wanting to be uh, specific about the exact uh, temperature, the exact degrees, I actually wouldn't worry about it. Uh, like I say, there's sort of a simple range and I would just keep it there because it's otherwise it, you're likely to make a mistake th thinking that you're being more exact when in fact uh, it's an unnecessary exactness. Mm -hmm.